Yo, yo, what's going on? Y'all, your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon review. And today, in this Help Me Devon review, we'll be looking at the Slate Digital ML1 microphone, which is a modeling microphone that has the ability to emulate the sound of a bunch of different, vintage, expensive, all kinds of microphones. I'm talking microphones that cost $10,000, $20,000, $5,000. You have access to getting uh, that particular sound or those particular sounds in one microphone. And I'm still to this day kind of blown away at the price point that you're getting this microphone for. And I will say that it is very worth it and it is a bang for your buck. And it has replaced uh, most of the microphones in my actual studio. I am currently cutting vo vocals on this thing like crazy as well as other things. Now, Slate Digital was so gracious to send me one of the microphones and I'm not gonna lie to you, I was not expecting to hear it the way I did and I'm very impressed with the microphone. Now, of course, you're trying to figure out how this thing works. What does it sound like? And that's what we're going to go over in this video. So for starters, I want you to understand that this model and microphone, uh, as far as what it does, in the software, which is the virtual mix rack that they have over here, you are able to literally click on what microphone you want your model, modeling microphone, the uh, ML1, to sound like. I'm talking microphones like the U67, the U47, the C800, uh, all kinds of very, very uh, uh, expensive uh, vintage microphones, as well as some just amazing classics that you have access to. So, what does it sound like? Uh, nonetheless, it's still a microphone in itself. And I wanted to know what it sounded like just naturally without any of the emulation stuff on it. Just naturally, what does this mic sound like? So let's do a test right quick and let's hear what it sounds like. Hold on one sec. Just make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. So sorry, have to do that. Back to the video. Okay, okay, okay. So long story short, the reason why I'm doing this little quick little talking test and comparing it to another microphone, specifically my AKG C414 XLS, is because if I just basically let you hear the microphone for what it is, you have nothing to really compare it to. So I need to have something in comparison to the actual Slate Digital Mic for you to get an idea of the difference of uh, how microphones can be in general. So off rip, the first thing I notice is I notice that the Slate Digital Mic is a lot more clear on the top end. It's really clear. It's really nice and easy. It's a calm mic, but I also like the way that it's attacking my transients, and that's something that a lot of people don't ever really say much about when it comes to their microphones as far as how it's really, really bringing out those consonants and hitting those moments really, really hard. If you listen to the AKG C414, you'll notice that it feels a little bit darker, and there's a lot more mid-range in that and that's not a slight to either microphone for the c414 the reason why i used it a lot uh was if i needed more mid-range out of something uh say for instance like guitars and things of that nature then i would move on over to my akg c414 to really get more of that presence and that lower end that low mid kind of presence that i've been looking for now with the slate digital microphone i want you to understand that they didn't design a mic to be something like really flat uh but more or less more neutral and uncolored uh and the reason why why they did it this way is because they chose the frequency response that they did on this microphone like this uh, because they felt that this was the best way to accurately uh uh, reproduce a sound for post-processing so they basically obviously modeled all of these magical microphones and then said okay well what would be the best input as far as a frequency response to be able to model all of those microphones so this is what they came up with and it's pretty neutral it's a natural sound I think it sounds nice I think it's open it's clear the mid-range isn't too much um, there's still a decent amount of low end that I'm getting on this thing and it does seem flat relative uh to other stuff i know that the akg uh, c414 has a slight bump in the mid-range which is clear and evident if you're listening and um it also has a slight bump in that like 10 12 kilohertz range i want to say but this microphone as far as the slate digital is i love the top end of the mic it sounds really really nice and smooth and i'm a big fan of it and that's basically it for these so let's get into more detail about the microphones now that you've heard it com in comparison to uh, another popular microphone 
Okay, so you heard what the microphone sounds like. It's very open, very uh, uh, very nice on the top end. Uh, the mid-range is, is still detailed, but not too harsh. I really like the sound of the microphone as it naturally sounds. Now, they were going for an uncolored and neutral sound with the microphone, and not so much a flat response, but better yet, uh, a frequency response in a characteristic of a microphone that they felt was built for post processing. So the reason why the microphone sounds the way it does naturally is because they already did this with post processing in mind to emulate the other microphones. So I guess in my head, they felt like this was the best frequency response or just sound or sonic character for the microphone in order to be emulated the way they have in the software. So now that we heard the microphone in its just natural state, let's play around with some of the emulation stuff. Let's get an idea of what it sounds like and basically how to use it within the soft software. I've also recorded a little bit of a vocal for it too, so you can get an idea as we click around inside the program. Let's do it. So this is the virtual mix rack. And within the virtual mix rack, I'm able to click Classic Tubes, Blackbird, and some other expansion packs that they have. For now, I'm gonna to stick to the Classic Tubes. So when I click the Classic Tubes, this opens right here. And I'm able to click right here where it says mics, and I'm able to see some of the mic uh, emulations that they have. For instance, they have the U47, the C800, a 251, a U67, a C12. It's a bunch of different microphones that they've used that emulate a bunch of other ones. Something also interesting that I need to point out is sometimes you'll see an FG800, for instance, which is modeling a C800, and then you see a 800M. Well, what they did was, and it's kind of genius, is they felt like not all mics age the same. They felt like the, the what makes mics unique in this regard when it comes to these types of microphones is uh, how they age. And as they age, they have different characteristics. So for the C800, or excuse me, for the FG800, it is a newer C800 versus an FG800, which is considered like a 10-year-old C800 which is pretty cool. And they do have two different sonic characteristics. So without further ado, let's just click around and let's see what these sonic ca characteristics sound like. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play it without any emulation at all, as far as the mic is concerned. I am using this pre this uh, preamp right here, the FG73, which is uh, modeling a 1073. And this thing sounds awesome. I love even putting this preamp sound on it. It it sounds so, it sounds amazing. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna play it without any of uh, the models on it. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna click on the FG47 and just keep it rolling from there. So without first, and then we'll just keep going down the list. Ibiza, looking for this girl, have you seen her? So let's start from here. Do you want to hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you got to do is pack a bag and flee. I just want to put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles in Angola. Lost in Ibiza, looking for this girl, have you seen her? It could be us in these vibes, baby, bring your camera. Cause I'm trying to make it last. I can help. Tell me when you want to dip, yeah, make it last, I can help. Tell me when you want to dip, cause baby, you got me spending money on this link up. You could have anything you want from me. Do you want to hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you gotta do is pack a bag and flee. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles in Angola. Lost in Ibiza. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? Now, there's a reason why I went back to the uh, CFG 800 emulation, and that's because with the more vintage microphones, you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, 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 different presence uh, shifts in them. But with that C800, it's very known for being being clear and bright. So when I went to that C800 just now, you knew like, ooh, there it is. And it had that characteristic. And that's so powerful to have at your arsenal when you're trying to decide what is the right sound for your sound source. So it's really dope to be able to have vintage microphones at your disposal being accurately uh, 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 imported into the actual software because of how the microphone works simul uh, in, uh, simultaneously with the actual software. That's so powerful. It's not expensive and it blows my mind. Th honestly, I'm gonna be very honest with you. This should be worth 
way more than what it is. But, I mean, it helps us all at the end of the day. Okay, so on the other side of this, you can also increase the intensity of the actual microphone sound. So if I click the C800, do you wanna hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you gotta do is pack a bag and flee. I just wanna- So right there, I increased the intensity and it didn't feel bad. It didn't feel like it just fell apart. It just felt like, oh, I got more of that sound and that's pretty powerful. So you can decide if you want more of a particular mic sound or if you want less, which is super dope. Now I'll go to this other P uh, part uh, or expansion pack that they actually offer. And it's called the Blackbird Studio uh, pack. And this pack, what you'll notice is, let's open it up, is that it has similar microphones to the classic tubes. So you're saying to yourself, well, why did they just make a, kind of like a duplicate of that? Well, at this particular studio, they use microphones that are those brands as far as being the U47 and things of that nature. But what people don't realize is sometimes uh, there were different capsules with these microphones. And let's say, for instance, after 1960, a different capsule happened to be used for a specific microphone. These microphones are special and unique to this particular studio. And it's really, really sick as far as, I guess, what they had in their mic locker. Um, and you get a different kind of sound for your U47, for your U67, for your C12, for your uh, U4, uh, the 49. You get a completely different sound as far as what you would get from the typical ones. These are very special and unique microphones that have aged different, that are treated different, that have been through uh, a different process, different capsules, all kinds of different stuff. So you get a different characteristic for the same type of microphone. I'll let you listen to a few of them right now. This is the Blackbird Studio uh, uh, expansion. So let's start with the U47. Do you wanna hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you gotta do is pack a bag and flee. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles in Angola, lost in Ibiza. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? It could be us in these vibes, baby, bring your camera, cause I'm trying to- Now, I really like that 251 sound, but right now what I want to do is I want to compare those Blackbird Studio microphones to the Classic Tubes uh, microphone to see if there is that difference, if I can really feel that difference. So let me open up the Classic Tubes, like so, boom. I'm gonna put it right here in this spot. I like how easy it is to kind of use it and just kind of set up my hierarchy as far as what goes first and stuff like that. I'm gonna turn this one off and let, let's let put up the uh, FG47 versus the B47. So these are the 47s, the U47 emulations. One is the Blackbird version and one is the Classic 2's version. Let's see what the Classic uh, 2 version sounds like first and then we'll try the U47. I'll keep going back and forth. Do you wanna hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you gotta do is pack a bag and flee. Now the Blackbird. Do you wanna hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you gotta do is pack a bag and flee. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit solo on this and I'm gonna hit this on as well so that we can hear it and then I'm gonna keep switching between them both. So I'm gonna switch here and switch here. So let's hear the Blackbird Studio one one more time, the U47, or excuse me, the B47. Do you wanna hit the Maldives? Me, already got the room and it come with two keys. All you gotta do is pack a bag and flee. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles in Angola, lost in Ibiza. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? It could be us in these vibes, baby, bring your camera. Cause I'm trying to make it last. I can help. Tell me when you want to do So they do have two very slightly different characteristics there. And it's so interesting because you can decide if you want to uh, or if you prefer one over the other. And once again, uh, these models, uh, I like the way these models sound and the fact that I'm able to uh, record a vocal and decide later uh, if I want a U47 on it, if I want a U67 or any of those famous microphones. So I think for the price point that this thing is at right now, um, even if it goes up in price just a bit, I really think this is worth your money. As far as it just being a natural, excuse me, a more a neutral sounding microphone, I like how the microphone sounds 
just by itself. And that's what drew me to it in at first. When I first started using it, I wasn't, I didn't even deep dive into all of these models. I really was just impressed with the, the, the quality of the sound that I was getting that fit my voice so much with that openness and that nice smooth top end. So I highly, highly recommend the Slate Digital ML1 as well as the software, uh, uh, the emulation software that comes with it. Uh, and I think you'll be really happy. I really, really do think you'll be happy. I don't really do uh, reviews on anything that I don't use myself or don't care to share, but this thing is worth it. I really, really am impressed by it. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also make sure you visit helpmedevon.com at any time to get some of our vocal chains and templates and goodies. And also make sure you go to at Help me, Devon, and hit that follow button on our Instagram and make sure you join our Discord community. There's a link in the description below for it so you can join some of our other aspiring engineers that are trading secrets and game 